Shake and Bake. We're coming to you live from Seattle, and I got a feeling this week is going to get dirty as we take a look in the rearview mirror at a time when fashion may or may not have been at its peak. The era of cargo shorts, trucker hats, the dazzled jeans, and the timeless Ed Hardy t-shirt. And yes, possibly the most awkward years of my life. I'm Kate Osborne, and today we are racing through the 2000s, the decade that brought us Xbox and Forza Motorsport, the building blocks for the Forza RC. In the final round of Series 2, Chemical is bringing Sexy back for one last showdown, starting in pole position. But it'll take a seven-nation army to hold Lege back as he claws his way towards the global top ten. It's the last stop before Mexico, so if these drivers want it, they better put a ring on it or they can say bye-bye-bye to their playoff dreams. Cuddle up in your Snuggies and get comfy. It's time for the Wednesday Showdown. Racing our way through the 2000s, I'm Kate Osborne, alongside me is Brian Eckberg, Community Manager, and a guy that you've maybe seen with Forza Community or out on a real track racing. It's Connor Daly. He is in town, close by, if you will, <laughs> racing, Thank you. hopefully racing this weekend in Portland with IndyCar Series. Welcome to our fun, Connor. It is an honor to be here. This is a very exciting day for me. Yeah, absolutely. More racing. <laughs> More we racing. We got a real race driver. We got... Forza RC drivers, it's going to be fantastic. And I think the real story here is the fact that we are racing through the 2000s. And that is important because the 2000s, if it wasn't for that decade, right. we as Forza would never be here. That's right. It was mid-decade mid that Forza Motorsport, the original Forza Motorsport on Xbox, came out when you guys were just kids. <laughs> That's a great but era. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was the, de the decade of Forza. It all began, and here we are. 15 years later or so, and we're, we're racing. And Connor, forward. for you, the 2000s, it was really instrumental in your career. Yeah, I mean, I was uh, just realizing that this is sort of what I wanted to do. Uh, I, w I had a horrendous bowl cut. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was growing up in go-karts. I had a great time, you know, with a, with a family and racing. And uh, 2008, I got into race cars for the first time. So it was, uh, it was a big time in my career. And uh, although it wasn't awesome at high school when I had to take my photos and stuff like that because I wasn't the best looking young child, young ginger <laughs> man. Um, but, uh, I knew but him we at that it. age, by the way. I would yeah. disagree. No. <laughs> so here we are now, and uh, now I get to commentate on, on a game that I've played for years and years, which is really cool. And he's actually joining us on the round that's leading us to Mexico City, which is going to be, if you ask me, I think some of the best, most intense racing that we've seen on any of the Wednesday showdowns. Absolutely. I mean, this is the final round before, as you you said we get to Mexico City. There's a lot to play for. There's some drivers out there that are a bit on the bubble that we're going to see today that are racing for their ticket to Mexico City. All right, it's time for us to get racing. But first, before we do that, we want to make sure you know that you can get involved in our show. And how you do that, it's through these polls. All right, first and foremost, Connor, what comes to mind when you when you see these cars? Because I feel like this is of your era. <laughs> All of high school, I have a 2004 <laughs> STI sitting in my garage. It has a hole in the engine block, uh, <laughs> but I've had it for 10 years now. So I have a, a hang on a, to that back. You got my blue? heart there. Is it yeah. the blue? Blue, absolutely. With black wheels though, not gold. Okay. So those are the cars that are up for grabs here today. Again, that you. Get, you get to get involved by choosing which one you want to see the drivers drive out on the track here today in race number two. And then, of course, if you join in our fun, these are some of the rewards. If you uh, join us at watch.forza.rc.com. It's one of the things I love about being part of Forza RC is just watching. You can get some great stuff that you can drive in Forza Motorsport 7. Kate, I know you love that Ferrari F40. I do. I saw it for the first time last week at Monterey Car Week, and it's just insane. The presence is its incredible. Yeah, and that's not it. We've got some liveried cars, uh, including the Celine S7, uh, 
Connor, I know you love that <laughs> Aston Martin DBR9. I love both of these cars, honestly. The Selena 7, when I was growing up, I thought it was something that I could never possess. I didn't think it was actually a real car. I thought it was just a, a, a concept, mm. and uh, it's it's incredible. And obviously, Aston Martin has an incredible racing history, and, it, and those are great cars to drive. I think the legacy of both Aston Martin and Selene in the industry, it's something that's unmatched. And both of these cars will be out racing today, which I think is a very important thing to know. And I think we will see some interesting racing because of that. All right, the driver's suit. This is also one of those rewards at watch.forts.rc.com because you've got to look in style. How about the swirl? If this you don't look cool, you're not going to go fast. So <laughs> yeah, that's very that's important. That's just how it works. That's absolutely yeah. true. It adds, it adds 0.2 seconds per lap. 100%, two tenths without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, before we got here this week, there are some things that happened this past weekend. Brian, some exciting racing happened in the qualifier. Let's not forget, these guys work hard just to get to the Wednesday showdown, and the Sunday races were madness. Here it is. The final week of qualifying. Okay. Race one saw Chemical take advantage of a sheepish lage through Corey Bend and went on to make the most of Box's breaking mistake of Forest Elbow to take the lead of the race and going on to grab victory in the saline. It was a frosty start in race two with Box and Lage both going at it was completely unaware of ASIC's presence allowed him to capitalize on the situation, signaling the third step on the podium from Lage. Up front, Chemical had the sudden realization that he could be starting first in today's racing. In race three, the top half of the pack were desperate to pinch points off one another, giving Chemical the golden opportunity to press hard away from the pack. With half the race to go, the Series 1 champion and the former world champion were reeling Chemical in. Chemical held his nerve, shaking off Lage into Turn 1, only to see Box had the same idea the next lap, being the key to his winning success in Race 3. This was it, guys. Europe's final 12 drivers to go through qualifying, and it was a nightmare start for Rossi with the saline twitching past the point of no return into the turn two tire wall. Veloce Baris managed to escape the mountain unscathed with excellent control, going on to maintain a strong fourth place finish. Meanwhile, the turn two tire wall opened its arms again to Mitch, allowing the room for Roadrunner to go from fourth to first in race one. Race two saw Mitch Hellbent on returning to the race row and forcing his teammate to concede the lead early on. Heads turned towards the mid-pack scrap though, leaving their fate to the hands of Maple Valley. With two spots available and five contenders, Rich was the first to seal his fate. Rossi had to get away. Hayasa had to beat Europa. Zermatt needed to beat Hayasa. A decisive incident gave Europa and Zermatt the clutch victory. Meanwhile, the Series 1 run up Mitch to the EMEA's final Sunday race victory of the Forza RC 2018. A little spin there, caught a couple people off guard, and where are they here today? Uh, well, they're going to Bathurst. <laughs> well, I think they're going to Bathurst. I think we've got a poll out there uh, on that. I'm not sure it's 100% confirmed, but yeah, you see that all the trouble that those drivers were having, the Celine S7 on Bathurst, a deadly combination. Yeah, well, a couple of absences also that we are, are kind of surprised, mm. I think, with Rossi uh, at JSR. I mean, yeah. we have Rossi, we have... We have Rossi, who what had jumped all of the Williams guys on the global leaderboard. Mm -hmm. Then you saw it in that recap from Mellish there. He had some accidents. He's not even competing today. So it's a good news, bad news situation for Rossi. I think he'll be fine. He's going to go to Mexico City, but you know he wants to be competing here today. And Commando. Yeah, and Commando has had all sorts of trouble. Right. We saw him get really frustrated on Twitch, uh, sorry, on Twitter, and uh, he's actually had some physical problems as well. So a lot going on with JSR Commando. He actually said he's not going to attend Mexico City. We'll see if that's true, but a lot of turmoil in the JSR team right now. Yeah, absolutely, and that is something you don't want to have happening as you are heading into the playoffs. We'll talk about a little bit. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But For right sure. now, let's go ahead and talk about the Celine car because that is one of those cars that, on a track, <laughs> it doesn't really matter what track it is. It is ultimately going to be difficult. I mean, you see what what Seven has said here. He just he couldn't get to manage to get one clean lap, and that was by himself, Brian. Think I know. about it with 
you know, more with, cars. with other cars on the track with you, this is a car that has a lot of power. It's got understeer on a tight, twisty track like Bathurst. Any track, as you say, the Celine is going to be a handful. You put 12 of these on the track together, it's a recipe for, let's call it adventure. <laughs> I like that. I think it's time to get some racing in here today. Let's go ahead and bring in Scott Cole and Ali Tech. How do you like what he just said? It's going to be a little adventure, gentlemen. Well, no doubt about it, and I appreciate you folks joining you. us today. We're going to get on the saddle one more time. I'm going to bring in my partner, Ali Tech. And Ali, last chance to earn some points. It's been such a long year, isn't it? You know, lots and lots of racing. We've ground this desk almost down to <laughs> dust now. <laughs> and uh, the last chance for these drivers to score some points out there and, uh, yeah, affect their grid positions, especially at the Mexico playoffs. Right now we're here in Europe, so let's get to meet the 12 drivers that will be out there on the track here in these three races. Chemical out in front. You see Mitch and Roadrunner of the Williams boys. Box and Lage, though, hanging out right there in the top five, along with Virus there in sixth. You have, you have Racers, still can't get a picture of the guy. Zermatt, Europa needs some points, and how about Davy Skills all the way at the back? Yeah, still no wins for Davy Skills, but he's been uh, throwing that at the board, uh, you know, trying over and over again. Eventually, he's got to get a win out there, surely. Maybe today's the day, uh, but starting from 12, that's a big ask, especially in the first race. Yeah, when you look at all the win totals that we've had over the season, it's really been majority lage and box. Uh, at that top spot, taking a lot of it home. So we're in Europe, you know, it's tough sledding going up against not only the 12 we have today, but throughout the season. Well, here is the car and track combo for race number one of the day. And it's that Celine S7. It's a beast, but sometimes it can be tough to tame. It is not easy to tame at all. 575 brake horsepower of hand-built American car. It's basically the McDonald's of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> of hypercars, I guess. And out here at Bathurst, it's going to be a big old advantage for the drivers on the front row of this grid. That's uh, Chemical and Mitch. Yeah, especially going when you go up the mountain, up and over the top, you start to wind down through turn 18, and then it is a absolute shootout to get you down to turn 23, 23 turns in total. And we talked about the bad handling. It's going to be taken to the test by these 12 drivers. We talked about Chemical up front along with Mitch and Roadrunner, but with Box and Lage right there in four and five, there will be some fireworks in this first race. And Lage needs points uh, this week. He needs to be moving up through the order. He's got a great chance to do it. He needs to make overtakes. We are green down on Bathurst, and here we go. That Celine S7 roaring through the first turn. And we already got some bumping and grinding. First of three races today here in Europe. We got North America coming up a little later on tonight. You can see Lage and Box right there in the middle. Those are the ones we're going to watch for. They could be the fast movers. But it's so tough. What are some overtaking spots we should be watching out for here on the track? This start of the race is the best chance for any overtaking. You can see Mitch taking advantage of it there to get past Chemical for the lead. So that's definitely everyone trying to get up the grid order now while the pack's bunched, because once you've been through the mountain one time, it's so punishing up there, the pack tends to separate, the gaps start to appear, and overtaking becomes exponentially more difficult. We are already seeing a huge gap between our leader and the rest of the pack. It is Williams Mitch well out in front. That's going to be some work to do for the rest of the crew as he is just cruising through the mountain. That white and blue Williams livery making it look easy there, Mitch. Got his teammate behind him as well. Williams Roadrunner running rear gunner for him there in second place. I don't think Roadrunner is going to be too happy to get comfortable in second behind Mitch, especially with the playoffs coming up. Uh, he is going to want to assert his dominance as the leader in the Williams team if he can. So I would expect a move if he can catch up. Williams with 24 wins on the season, 10 alone for Mitch. And he is right now just stretching his legs through this first lap. First of seven here on race number one. We're happy you decided to join us here for the final Wednesday showdown. The road to Mexico City coming up just a few weeks from now. And then, of course, in October, we'll be in London to cap off this amazing season we've had in 2018. Lays sniffing around fifth position right now and looking to make that fourth. He's up the inside 
of Series 1 playoff winner Noble Box. It's into Hell Corner. That's turn one. Late on the brakes from Lage. It's going to make that stick. Knows exactly what he's doing as we move into lap number two. And you remember, he missed the first race of this Series 2. So he's currently in 12th position globally. So if he's going to try to get into that top 10, top 5 as we go to Mexico City, he's going to need some good performances here today. You know, I've been sweating out the math of this leaderboard <laughs> all week long. I've got, like, uh, sheets in front of me, all sorts of different bits to take notes on. Lege can move up positions today. He can make up four, in fact. He can overtake Mitch, Seven, Roadrunner, and Wesley, uh, someone who's out in the uh, LATAM field. Uh, so a lot of emphasis here put on Lage's performance over the next three races, doing well so far. Well, Lage gives the wall a little kiss there through Griff's, uh, Griffith's Mount, down through Reed Park, the Frog Hollow, as we get ready for turn 10 here on the back side of the track. And if you're going to try to overtake right here, you're a bad man. <laughs> you don't want to do it. The skyline's such a difficult corner, that crest, and you go down the hill to Woods, the Forest Elbow and the Dipper. Very difficult turns we're just heading into now. This is where Box made the mistake in qualifying. You can see him getting a little bit squirrely there on the way into the corner, but it's a smooth exit for Box. Bump on the wall and Lage won't have the run. Yeah, hey, so much power in this S7. We've heard our drivers talk about how challenging the handling can be as they come down the Conrad Strait. A little bit of lock up there. Is it just me or is that gap between Mitch and Roadrunner? It looks like it's getting a little bit smaller. Yep. End of lap two and Roadrunner putting the magnets on maybe a little bit here. Well, they're teammates. I know this is in a visual as you see seven getting pushed a little bit to the side by Lage, who's now riding along in eighth. Virus has moved up to six, so kind of staying in that sixth position. Box in fifth. Chemical in third, started the day and pole position. You see Virus going wide, that's going to open the door for Seven, who's starting to climb up. Lage is thinking about coming through as well. Lage back in seventh, he was up to fourth earlier on, so that must have been a mistake for Lage at the end of lap two, dropping down the order there, and now having to recover up to seventh place. Yeah, he lost momentum coming through 16, 17, and 18, right around the Forrest's elbow. And we're in lap three of seven here on Bathurst. That was a car sideways at the cutting on the uphill hairpin. Can't work out who was it was. That, but was that Europa? That was, was that Roadrunner? Roadrunner down to fourth so far. Chemical up to second, Asics in third. That tick is going crazy. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to check that out later on. Yeah, right now we're sitting on board Mitch though. You did see a flash of an S7 wide on the track and that's I mean when you get that perpendicular it's it's really hard to get you going back parallel Mitch just cruising yeah lap three and Roadrunner's got 99 problems Mitch has not got one <laughs> yeah. absolutely down the Conrad straight for the third time Up and through 20, 21, and 22, they call them the chase. It's a difficult section of track here. Fast right-hander over that crest into the braking zone. Gets to be on the brakes very early in the Celine. It's not got huge braking performance with the stock brakes on it. It's controlling that deceleration as you head into the left right of the chase. Nicely held there from Lage, who we were running on board with. Well, as we move into lap four of seven, let's bring in Brian Eckberg for what happened to Roadrunner. Yeah, I want to show that replay. It's not clear he was pressuring Mitch here. I'm not sure if he made contact, but he got just clipped by that wall, spun himself around. Chemical got around him. Now, good news is Roadrunner's still in third place, but you see, he just looks like he turned a bit into that wall there, Ali, and spun himself around. Just hooking the nose. Just, it was so, so subtle, wasn't it? A little bit less, and he could have gotten away with it just being a few sparks and a little uh, spectacular moment. So unlucky there for Roadrunner. Appreciate that, Brian. So Roadrunner will fall back. He was really the only one that had a shot at catching Mitch. And, and Chemical lucky that we didn't have a pileup right there, that, that he was able to clear to the inside. 
So some heads up driving there by Chemical to keep himself in that podium position. Go on board now with Roadrunner, who's made his way up to third position after that incident. He did drop down to fourth, I think, momentarily, and now he's got Box on his tail. Box has been a little bit unsteady here in the start of this race. We saw him drop back behind Lege earlier on. He's collected himself a little bit now, though, and looks more composed. Lap 4 of 7, Scott Cole, Alley Tack along you. Race 1 of 3 today in Europe. And as you can see, a lot of, a lot of kisses against the wall. Anytime you tune in and you see one or both of those headlights missing, you know that you, you know, you're trying to, you're having a tough time keeping it between the lines. This Celine, with its mid-mounted V8 engine, has a lot of weight behind the driver, a lot of weight which pushes on the rear tires. And that makes the car rotate in a way that a lot of the drivers won't naturally find, or won't find intuitive, they won't be used to it. We drive a lot of front engine cars in the Forza RC. This mid-mounted Celine is going to give them a lot of troubles during the corners and, and predicting the movement of the car. Let's check in with Kate Osborne on what's going on in the community. Yeah, there's some definitely some chatter going on. Mitch is so on point, said Mouth Milk, and Mouth Milk, and JSR Rossi came in and said, because he's at the front, he doesn't need to focus on, you know, basically what's behind. Do you guys agree with that? It's always easier to be the lead dog, get the clean air, get out in front, and, and you don't have to push as hard. You know, it makes a big difference in the Celine when you, when you can go 95, 97% instead of going all out. Absolutely right. Uh, you know, he's just able to measure his own pace, not overdrive the car. The Celine's actually a car which uh, it'll give you faster lap times if you don't push it too hard. If you just take 10% back, it will start really cutting the seconds down. So Mitch able to really relax into it. I'm doing a bit of maths here up on the desk, and I think if Mitch comes first in this race and Roadrunner third, Mitch is actually going to overtake Roadrunner by one point in this championship. It's all happening here on track. Absolutely, the road to Mexico City. Final chance to grab some points before we head south of the border. Of course, we're coming to you live from Seattle, Washington, here in the States. This is the European side of things here in round four of series two. Remember, we're just in race one of three. And it's all about what you can get away with. And you see a lot of our drivers, they're okay with a little graze of the wall. And I think that's why you you saw Roadrunner just happen to dig in just a degree too much. And there's seven and Box coming together. Seven, so late on the brakes. Bumping the rear of Box there. Both cars lose out on time. Both cars lose out uh, compared to Roadrunner, who's off up the road. Doesn't need a second invitation for that. But yeah, seven, Roadrunner's teammate, uh, giving Box a little bit of a nudge there as the two of them came back towards the back straight. And there's going to be a little bit of breathing room for Roadrunner after those two come together. Great. You know someone who this is a great, a great race for in a lot of ways is Chemical. He looked so unsteady at the start of the race. Tumbled down from his pole position that he'd earned in the, uh, in the top 24 shootout and uh, really was gifted second position back by other people's mistakes. So Chemical sort of getting away with it a little bit here in second place. Yeah, slow and steady sometimes will get you on the podium. He's done a nice job after winning the pole for this Wednesday showdown here in race number one, but he's fallen back a bit. Box trying to catch up with Roadrunner. He's only got two laps to do so. As back again, they'll go down the mountain straight through the quarry and back up and around turn four through five, six, seven, and there's some more contact with the concrete barrier. These drivers are pushing so hard. I mean, especially Roadrunner, we've been on board with him. It's like watching ping pong bouncing left and right across these, uh, these concrete barriers, uh, which guide you through the mountain section of the track. There's not a lot of great overtaking possibilities, especially with only seven laps. So you are hoping for those mistakes. You're hoping for those loss of momentum, something that Lage was trying to push for. Here comes Virus to the inside. He'll go by Lage. He's moved back into sixth place. And the question now for seven, is can he? Ooh, that's a massive marks. spin, seven. Boy, has not been seventh day, and maybe predicting his future with some of those tweets we saw of 
He does not love this S7. It gets all the way up into the tire barrier, and that allows Lage to move back into fifth place. That was his starting position from the get-go. And that'll drop seven all the way back to 11. So Mitch in first, Chemical run around in second, Roadrunner in third. You can see Mitch just absolutely hot lapping at the moment. Just cruising, we were on board there with seven. He's looking backwards from his car and he, he seems to take a little bit too much speed through Skyline, was unable to decelerate the car into that next chicane. Big shunt from him, I wouldn't be surprised to see damage on that car. Right now, though, it's the battle for fifth, and it rages on between Veloce Virus and G2 Lage. Yeah, the turns 11 through 17 are a real tester. As we move into the final lap, Lage in fourth. Virus for Veloce, trying to chase him down. S7, there's the damage on his car. You can see it on the, uh, on the setup there, just getting repaired by his pit crew. With one lap remaining, I've got to say, I would limp through. <laughs> It's very difficult to make up that time if you go into the pits and repair it. Unless he didn't seem to have engine damage, I would have just limped it through. But it's a lost race for seven. Either way, he'll have to come back in race two. Final lap here on Bathurst. Two more races remain. But for right now, Lage has gained zero ground. In these seven laps around, Mitch has been tremendous. Chemical has sort of steadied the ship after a slow start that found him dropping back to third. He's gained a spot through some mistakes, especially the one where Roadrunner got turned all the way around. So even though Mitch is performing well, the other two Williams boys in Roadrunner and Seven have found themselves in a bit of chaos. It was always going to be a chaotic race. It was a race of attrition round the mountain. Very classy drive here from Mitch, though. He's looked clean all the way through. He's managed to monitor his own pace, hasn't put too much pressure on himself, and that's just allowed him to be very, very clean out there. And I think two of the shiniest S7s uh, at the end of this race are going to be Mitch's and Chemicals in second. Last time down the Conrad straight through the chase, and then good old 90-degree turn 23 as they go back to the finish line here. Still some mistakes out there that could be made. But it looks like Mitch is going to hold on, able to capture that first position through lap number one. And he'll hold off Chemical, who finished third. And that's how that one will come to a close. I always get cringe and awkward when, when that part happens. <laughs> I'm like, hey, it's just me watching the race. No big deal here. <laughs> Uh, but you, we, we talked about it. it the, this is a powerful car that doesn't handle very well, mm. and especially through the mountain and then turns 11 through 17 are, are quite the test. It was interesting to see how much tolerance these guys had for scraping their car up against the wall. Right. They're just letting it happen in a lot of spots because they know, I think that's part of their approach to this track. They're going to allow for a little bit of error because they know that if they don't, they're going to, they could possibly just completely end their races. Yeah, if they don't consistently bump up and grind against those walls, they're not racing hard enough That's in a right. lot of ways. And yeah, Roadrunner in particular being very violent with his car there. Uh, it, my, my maths report in <laughs> incoming <laughs> is uh, I'm pretty sure that before that race, uh, Mitch and Seven were tied in points in the championship. This is the, the broader championship of, the, uh, of Series 2, the run up to Mexico. So... Zero points there for seven, mm -hmm. and 20 points there for Mitch means that Mitch moves ahead of seven by quite a large margin, and actually overtakes Roadrunner as well, uh, it's moving up now to like sixth position in this championship. So really nice race for Mitch. I mean, all the way around. Mitch looked completely confident. He, until the very end, had fastest lap. He was doing 206 ones throughout. Uh, just looked great. I mean, that's the benefit, of course, Scott, from being yeah. in first position on Bathurst. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the replay here of race number one and we talked about it it was the mistakes it was that we didn't see any any dives any overtakes it was just hold on for dear life and didn't Lage have a circuitous route to, route to start and end in fifth this is that moment we saw Lage fall back we actually had a camera on that he just went wide lost pace but he would eventually get himself provisionally back to fifth and there's that moment Allie when Williams uh, Roadrunner just turned himself around it was actually a great recovery uh, by Roadrunner to stay in third there
It was, and a great reaction as well. You called it during the race. A great reaction from Chemical, who managed to navigate his way past you, know, oh aimed my. for the smoke and kept his foot in it. That was that massive incident we saw with Seven, really losing it through Skyline. At the top of the hill, just you have to have so much, in, let's say, fortitude to get to the top <laughs> of the hill there at top speed, and uh, it costs Seven there. But you could tell from, from the way he was acting on social media and how tough this S7 is, the confidence level wasn't there. And when it's not there, you're prone to make mistakes. You are, you are. And someone who's made a few too many mistakes there is Box. Mm. He had one chance, I think, to, to retake the 2018 championship lead. He needed some really good results today. Uh, he knew, would have needed two wins in a second. So already that mathematically excludes him, I think, from taking that back uh, before Mexico. Yeah, we probably don't need to worry too much about Box, but you're right. <laughs> it's true. not a great way to start. First world problems. Yeah. That's right. It is <laughs> definitely first world problems for Box. Uh, he'll be fine, but I think he probably wanted a better result here in race number one. Yeah, no moving from our two Titans and Box and Lays. Let's get the full provisional results from Kate. Taking a look at this rundown, I think a lot of people would say that was a good race overall. We saw some commentary there. And looking at the results, though, it looks like Mitch was the one that was, quote, tremendous. I think, Scott Cole, you said. Chemical, of course, had a great race, as THR said. THR Rhino said he's hungry, followed by Roadrunner, Box, Lege, who stayed right there, kind of where he went in with it. Uh, virus and six racers and, and so on and so forth. You know, something that Rossi had just said on chat was, uh, hashtag TPR revival, uh, which I thought was is pretty good. And then of course seven, as he was coming on chat, just said, "Well, that's what happens when the car is 100% unrealistic." You know, I think that is the kind of conversation that someone would have that is not happy with the car. Obviously, knew that it was going to be a challenge for him. He said that earlier on in his tweet. Gentlemen, do you think it was 100% unrealistic, or do you think it was an issue that uh, he may have had himself? Uh, <laughs> a good craftsman never blames his tools. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I mean, that's, that's how it is in the end, isn't it? It's the same competition for everybody out there. I mean, how, how realistic is it to a, to a, a real-life Selena 7? There's probably about three people in the world who could really tell you that around a course like Bathurst. Yeah, it, it was a car that we did not take on. I mean, it was, it's a dream car, no, no oh, doubt yeah. about that, Amazing. especially in the 2000s that we're celebrating. But, yeah, th there wasn't a lot of examples out there. Uh, so we'll end up finding out where these guys end up coming out in the final results, Cape. Uh, yeah, we absolutely will. But before we get to that, it's time to take a closer look at the car that's filling up our studio. One that Connor Daly, I feel, is connected to at a deeper level. But Allie, take it away. This is a 2004 Subaru Impreza WRX STI. And yeah, it's wearing a hockey mask. Designed by Peter Stevens, this car shares heritage with the Lotus Esprit and the McLaren F1. It's beautiful, refined, it's a future classic, it's got grind marks on its spoiler. You see, when your granduncles have surnames like Solberg, Burns or McRae, the wrong side of the asphalt can be hard to resist. And wimpy road components have a funny way of getting swapped out for tougher hardware. Who needs a CD player, back seats or carpeting when you've got a Vibeck ECU, Ryger Racing dampers and Treddy Hoosier off-road tyres? Under the hood, that four-cylinder boxer engine was rebuilt with a compact Garrett turbo and jammed up to the aggressive levels required to navigate mountain paths, hill climbs, puddles, and, well, anything Mother Nature could dream up. No, the result is not a museum piece, and yeah, it's unlikely this STI will live out its days being lovingly detailed in a private collection. But you tell it that. I'm not going to tell it that. It's terrifying. What a stunner of a car. If that doesn't make you want to go do some stage rally racing, I don't know what does. I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> Alex, you're pretty the enthused about it. Right here, let's just, right around here. There's some good, there's a, some good rally places out around mm. where we are here in Seattle. Anyways, okay, the global leaderboard. This is what's important to talk about because there have been some big moves recently uh, with Mitch, for instance. 
Yeah, I mean, the fact that we were talking about earlier we had that Mitch is 789 on the global leaderboard. Now, Ali, with a win, yeah. Mitch is the number one guy for real. Number one for the Williams team, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is all kind of my crummy maths that I do on the back of a piece <laughs> all of paper. For yeah, now. yeah, this all gets like officiated <laughs> yeah. later by people with actual brains for this stuff. Uh, but yeah, as far as I can tell, Mitch has just taken uh, that position, that sixth place, uh, off of, off of uh, the guy in front of him, which was, who was Roadrunner, mm -hmm. uh, by one point. And as we take a look at that, the Zoom for the first time has overtaken Box on the global stage, and that's an important thing to note. Yeah. Yeah, it's another guy we always talk about, Zoom. Uh, formerly, form, formerly hard BR as the number one driver in the world. Now he is the number one driver in the world. And, and what a great job he does. You know, we don't get to see him so often because he's out in uh, LATAM in, a, in South, you know, uh, yeah, Southern America and doing a great job out there. You know, he's, uh, he's getting warmed up. Yeah. He's ready for, the, for everybody to come to Mexico City and he's going he's gonna to be ready to dominate. And like, remember Series 1, we were all talking about Zoom going like, uh, he gets it really easy out, out in LATAM. Right. He has it, an easy competition. He just brought it at the Seattle playoffs, did an incredible job out there and uh, really proved us all wrong. So Zoom is a world-class competitor and someone who I can't wait to see perform in Mexico. And of course, then we had Leish, who we saw in that last race, sitting just basically consistent. He didn't move up, he didn't yeah. move down much, ran in fifth in the provisional results. What do you think he's at in his head right now? Where do you think he's at? What? Lege, I mean, Lege is, uh, he's been recovering all season. He missed out on one of the week's uh, Wednesday showdowns, and he's been pushing his way up through the pack. Global position 12th last time we looked, but right now he's fighting for seventh position. Yeah, and, and we talk, we've, we, I think we've sort of discovered this season how important it is to be there every single week. We see it with, even with the best in the world, Lege, who is a champion, we see when he's not when he can't compete in a week, it affects your status. It affects your starting position, it affects your overall points. You've got to fight by missing a week. You have to fight even harder. Yeah, you miss out on points, but you also lose that momentum personally. Yeah. We've seen him have to recover that week after week. And when I wanted to make a point to say that Williams Racing too, you talk about that momentum and you talk about consistency and you have, they have those three drivers, seven, eight, nine. How important is it to have your team support knowing that they're all running well too? That's gotta be huge. <sighs> I wonder, I wonder about the team support <laughs> in Williams right now, because it's, it's, you know, I mean, these guys are race drivers at, in, at the end of the day. And yes, they, uh, they're on the same team in name only, but I don't think Roadrunner is happy at all that Mitch is now <laughs> ahead of him on the global leaderboard provisionally. I don't think he's happy about that in the least. <laughs> he's not patting you on the back. No, no. I'd rather you than me. Well, yeah, well done, sir. sir. I want to bring in, we'll, we'll circle back around that when, when Connor's back in the seat because I think that would be interesting mm. to get his take of being friends on the track and off the track, yeah. too. Like trying to find that balance What's of that being, middle ground? For sure. yeah, yeah. For with sure. teammates, especially. Um, all right, Commando, dropping off. Mm. What do you guys think about that? Yeah. Got to feel bad for Commando, another guy who has sort of, Ali, expressed his frustration as to his performance in Forza RC, especially in Season 2, Series 2. You know, I've, I've watched Commando through so many community leagues, through the Forza Racing Championship this year. This was actually really his first major campaign in the Forza mm -hmm. RC. And um, you always wait for his luck to turn around mm. you, for, with Commander. You wait for it, and then he absolutely dominates once it does. But it's just never come round for him. Absolutely. And I think another thing to take a note about is the fact that bad luck happens when you're in a game mm. situation, when you're on a real track. And again, I think Connor would add another piece of insight on that because he's run in and off of those years where he's had real good, strong luck. And, then, and then you have to get back up on the horse, or if you will, get back in the cock, you know, the the cockpit and really drive the car. One more point I wanted to make about Commando. He actually ha had expressed some some physical, he's having some physical problems. He right. had hurt his wrist. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it's the, the, the bad luck we talk about. He has had some good results. He's won some races. But when you couple that with some wrist problems, you, you, you can't blame him for feeling down at this point. Yeah, and uh, you know, racing through physical pain, you know, in, in any being an athlete in any sport and doing it through physical pain is difficult. When it all comes down to your thumbs and to very, very small margins of movement in your fingers and thumbs, that pain can be very, very difficult to work through. So Kamano did a really good job this week in qualifying. He did a strong job in the races, but not quite enough. Mm. All right, TPR Revival. You know, Rossi's talking about it in chat. It's <laughs> definitely happening to a point. It's so 
big that it's a hashtag now. It's trending. <laughs> I love yeah. it. I know, right? <laughs> Check that out. Well, um, we've got a nice spread here. We've got Zermatt making it in. Davy Skills, who we talk about. Wednesday, you're going to get that win. And Chemical, what a performance this weekend to start from pole and end up in second provisionally in the race number one. I love this graphic as well. It's three I was small saying, I feel like they're <laughs> are, baby. I was literally yeah. thinking the same thing. They all three look so happy in that. <laughs> <laughs> the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> the guy on the left there, Zermatt, I think uh, he's been one of the driving forces for getting TPR really to, to look like a full esports team mm -hmm. and really have all the branding and nice stuff around them. All supplied actually by AB Graphics, yep. uh, whose t-shirt I'm wearing today. Nice. Uh, so, a yeah. plug. <laughs> There's a plug. A little links in. <laughs> also, Ali, that was talked about on our chat as well. It's your t-shirt. Always your clothes, Ali. Hey, what can I say? Best dressed man in full. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chemical and Box, the lineup there, going head to head. It's, it, it makes it for an interesting playoff for sure in Mexico City. Yeah, I mean, Box is a guy that is a proven champion. He's been struggling maybe the second half of Series 2, maybe isn't performing to Box-like level, levels, and Chemical has the best chance he's had in the Forza RC today to score some major points in a Wednesday showdown. Chemical is the definition of an all-or-nothing driver, though. He's come in twice into the Wednesday showdowns in Series 2, pole position both times, right. <laughs> True. or he hasn't qualified <laughs> right. at all. Yeah. He's all-or-nothing. Feast or, or famine. Yeah, yeah, feast or famine, exactly. <laughs> I think that, that goes to show for a lot of drivers. There, there, there are people that like to run consistently just, you know, right here, but there are drivers who come in with, for, on a, with a BAM, or you just you don't see them. Yeah, you need now. Chemical needs that consistency. We saw some offs of him in in series uh, week three, and he had a great second place. He's got to be feeling great about a second place finish, uh, but he's got to keep that consistency going, especially in that reverse grid race. I wonder how that's going to affect his his start. Yeah, uh, you know the reverse grid will be probably one of the harder races for him. I think he he likes to lead from the front. We saw that in maybe Melish's recap of uh, the Sunday. It, it's always going to be hard for Chemical, but if a win is so rewarding mm -hmm. out there. I'd just love to see him get it. You know? yeah. And let's not forget, he had fastest lap in that race. He did a two, yeah. 206 0. Speaking of that race and mm -hmm. his fastest lap, let's go ahead and take a look at those final results as they have made their way in, as we were just talking about Chemical in second. But Mitch took it with that one. An incredible race for him. Tremendous, as Scott said. Uh, second, Chemical, Roadrunner in third, Box in fourth, Lage right there, and Mid Pack in fifth, Virus. Six and on and so on and so forth. And then seven right there in 12th with that little bit of a spin issue there at the now, end. Now, if you would have asked me at the, before this race began whether we would have no penalties in a Selene S7 at Bathurst, <laughs> I would have called you crazy. Right? But a clean race from these guys, so well done to all of them. Absolutely. All right, let's get to the race. This is a time that you guys all like to have. It's time for racing, gentlemen. I appreciate it and good job there. And I, I, I'm, I'm similar. I was really surprised I didn't see any penalties on Bathurst. I want to welcome back in Connor Daly. And we have an opportunity to move along to race number two. And we're going to find out, is it going to be the Impreza or is it going to be the Lancer? Which one are you preferring? I'm leaning heavily towards the Subaru. Uh, <laughs> I have a very good tie to that car, so we'll see. I, I see thumbs down from you. <laughs> thumbs what? down from me. I'm in, I'm in the Evo 8. I mean, right. there's, there's a guy out there, THR Evo 8, if you're watching, man. Uh, yeah, respect <laughs> to you. I think he's got one in his garage. <laughs> well, uh, race uh, poll number two is closed, but here's race poll number three. You guys can get involved if for the next race will either be on Maple Valley, a Forza Classic, is it going to be wet or dry? That is up to you. Boy, and I, whatever you put that uh, that Aston Martin on, uh, I'm going to probably, the driver's going to be hoping for dry. Wet will be more interesting. It's a track which uh, which really relies on front grip, on the grip on the front tires. You know, it'll give you understeer if, uh, if you look for it in that track. The Aston is a car which maybe naturally leans towards understeer, and so the wet... Uh, it's gonna it's gonna make that worse. Well, I mean, wet racing, uh, they always say that's the great equalizer, right? It's a totally <laughs> different driving style. Uh, I love racing in the wet, um, and and I on on Forza, I, that's that, I think that would create a very interesting variable for sure for everyone to deal with. What do you think about uh, us going back to Maple Valley? I know we're not going there uh, next. We're going to be at Nurburgring. Ring. Right. Uh, we still figure out what car and track, what what car we're going to have on that track. How you think about race number three going to a Forza Classic like Maple Valley? Uh, it's, it's good to have it on the Naughties week, right? Because uh, <laughs> uh, the, the track was basically invented for the first <laughs> Forza Motorsport, which came out in the Naughties. So uh, a very appropriate track in that way, at least. It's a great um, track. A great I track agree. as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's for one that you know is is created by the game, and it's an incredible. The actual racing circuit in itself, I've always enjoyed it. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think good racing out there, especially good uh, moments for side-by-side -side action uh, for the cars. And so, yeah, very enjoyable. No burgering first, though, so you've got to have a... Uh, 
you got to eat your vegetables before you get your pudding. <laughs> That's right. Let's take a look at what car you guys chose to get out there. And it is the Subaru. Nailed it. 278 <laughs> horsepower. She's a bit heavy, but she does do 060 just a shade under five seconds. <laughs> I've done it a few times a little bit quicker, but uh, I've put way too much money and way too much time into mine. Yeah, this is pretty much stock out of the factory, Ali. This car uh, had a little bit of a turbo on it, so you're going to watch out for turbo lag, four-wheel drive as well. So lots of acceleration is always a good thing. Nürburgring, uh, this is the GP circuit, so not the Nordschleife. This is uh, the smaller track, which will uh, yeah take you... Uh, through, yeah, uh, just a shorter shorter version. Yeah, that uh, turn eight on the Dunlop is probably the best opportunity to jump in and take over in this Subaru. This is going to be a real interesting race number two of three. And here is the grid order. You mentioned we had no penalties after race number one. So Mitch will lead from the front. He's got a chemical behind him. There is Roadrunner. Box and Lage once again. But seven is the one that probably took it the worst all the way down the bottom. And we are green at Nürburgring. Go, go, go here in race number two. Six laps around this amazing German beast. Everyone taking a defensive line into turn one, a very tight hairpin. This is a, it's a great track for racing, though. I've, I've always enjoyed uh, racing here, both in the wet and the dry. There's a lot of opportunity for overtaking. The first sector especially, you can see the drivers throwing it up the inside here into uh, yeah, this sort of Mercedes uh, arena area. It's a, a little bit of a difficult place on Forza especially because you want to straighten the car out here and power through uh, towards the middle sector of the lap. Is that the same in, uh, in the real world? Yeah, absolutely. And, and especially coming into this next section here, the, the, the track has a lot of banking and it's, it, it looks more in real life. Um, than it is in the game, but you can still feel it when you're when you're driving in the game because you'll get some of that grip in the middle of the corner that you don't necessarily expect. Well, here they head down to the Dunlop curve. That's turn eight. That's the one we're going to have to watch out on either side. But once again, Mitch stretching his legs, getting out in front, and it's looking thus far through this first half a lap that Mitch is, is come to race today. You know, I've got this big old page of stats back at home and I go through it before each one of these. There's almost no difference in terms of stats between Mitch and Roadrunner, apart from in drive type. So Roadrunner loves front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, but if you get an all wheel drive car, Mitch will mop him up. It's an interesting driving style with an all wheel drive car, I think, in, uh, in, in Forza. I mean, there's, there's such a difference between going from having the power delivered in, in, in the way that the Subaru does compared to, let's say, the Celine, for sure. I mean, that's an entirely different animal. Um, but I, I love driving the Subaru, actually, on this game because it's, it's, it's actually, I feel more in control, but you obviously get that inherent understeer in the center that always frustrates you. Absolute driver's car through this first lap of six. We're in race number two. And you can see racers trying to hold off Zermatt. And Zermatt looks like he might get passed here by Box. Davy Skills right there on his heels. A little bump draft going down the front straight here. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long old straight here, and uh, that run into the first corner is uh, probably the best overtaking spot on this track. Uh, heading on down there, what are you looking out for on the left-hand side to, uh, to get on the brakes? Uh, I mean, it's, it's interesting because the brake zone is actually at an angle. So you try to get the car straight under braking, um, which is which is sometimes uh, difficult, especially in a in a heavier car. Um, and, but but it's it's if you can nail the brake zone and sort of turn and then brake, uh, it's it's really good to get down to the apex, um, hopefully inside of another guy. That's right. Scrub up all that speed and get that car turned. Yeah, Zermatt right now is the one that's the magnet for chaos. As boxers will not let go of the opportunity to maybe take this seventh spot. There is Mitch, he's out in front in that classic Subaru blue. And when you think about, when you think about this 2004 Impreza, that's what you see. You <laughs> see that blue color. I don't know about the red, the red's a little, yeah. <laughs> I like the red too, I like the red. I mean, there's a, there's a whole lot of Subarus out there which would be in the blue and gold, right? That And the 22B from 98 is a, a oh, classic. Very blue, yeah. Right, very blue, yeah. yeah. But you see, uh, you see him there with the with the very much with the V type style at the corner, where you break, go past the first apex, sort of, uh, 
and, and then get to the middle almost like a diamond uh, to try and get the exit speed. And, and that's sort of what's, what it's all about in a car that inherently understeers. If you can roll the speed in on entry, get it turned in the middle very efficiently and quickly, like almost like a V, like a diamond shape, and then you can get a good exit, it's, it's, the, most, it's the best way to get at the most speed out of a corner like that. Square off that bend and almost and then rely on the four wheel drive and all that exactly. acceleration pull to get you out of it. Yeah, pull you yeah. out of it, yeah. yeah. Through turn 13 now for Mitch, who in these first two races, although he didn't start at the pole in race number one, he's he's proven that he's looking to grab some points and, and improve his positioning down in Mexico a few weeks from now. What a great job he's doing of that. Mitch will uh, be very happy with himself right now. Two, uh, well, one win so far, the second looking good on lap two of six, so still uh, still two thirds of this race remain. What's your take on Box right now, Ali? Looks like he's been struggling these first two races. He's been aggressive, but nothing's cashing in for him. You know, Box carried his momentum from Seattle into the first two weeks of Series 2. The, the Seattle winner and uh, somebody who really dominated in the early half of this series, but he's been dropping back. He qualified badly last time out. He's qualified somewhat averagely this time, and he's down there fighting for mid positions. Connor, do you know drivers out there that are great when they're in that top three, but when you get them in the middle of the pack and they sort of disappear? Well, it's very easily to get distracted by all the craziness that's going on around you. I and mean, right now, the leader of Mitch, he's 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 settled into his zone. He's got all he's got his clear track in front of him. It's it's a much nicer position to be in, especially um, you know when when he knows the guys behind him are fighting, and that's and that's what's going to hold them up. Whereas he is just happily moving along, <laughs> and it's it's easy to make a mistake. It is because when you want that, when you have that lead and you have a powerful lead. Why not get a little bit more of a lead? And then that can almost, uh, you know, you could run into trouble there. The other side is you can also lose a little bit of focus, right? You get lax, you sort of feel like you're almost out there on the track alone. And next thing you know, slowly over the laps, the guy behind you is is gaining a, a tenth of a second, half a second as you move through. Yeah, the motivation to be in P2, P3 is is incredible. I mean, there's, there's many times I've been in that situation where I've been leading and I've said that there's no way anyone's going to catch me. And, and that's that's a good mental perspective to have. But also, I've been in that second and third place as well. And it's like, hey, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that I take this lead. And it's going to be a great story when it happens because everyone likes to pass for the lead. Well, we're riding along with Lage right now. He's in fourth place. And he, a little bit of a love tap on the back bumper. Lage is someone who's in danger right now of overdriving that car. We were talking about finding a rhythm, leading a race, being calm in the front. Mitch can do that. He can run at 90%. But Lage needs to push. He needs to close up that gap to Chemical, maybe even attack Roadrunner and Mitch by the end of this race. And that puts him in danger of driving too hard, making mistakes. It's yeah, a great little run there on the outside. Those beautiful Fernando Alonso colors. <laughs> he is fast. Chemical doing a nice job being a, a big green roadblock at the moment. Look at that defense from Chemical. I love the aggression of that. Not even a car width between him and the pit wall as they head down towards T1. And Lage looking around the outside, under braking. Do the old over under here. Chemical did a good job in, in uh, defending that, that's for sure. Check in with Kane Osborne. She's got something from the community. Well, it's actually interesting watching these guys talk about the, the car all together and how interesting it is on this track. Uh, Connor, two things for you. The bad luck question that was talked about earlier was seven. How does someone as a driver mentally get over that, you know, when they feel like they're just getting hit with bad luck to bad luck to bad luck? Also, <laughs> how in real life challenging is this car to drive on a track like this? Well, the bad luck thing is uh, something I'm very familiar with. Uh, you just got to keep going out and delivering every time you get an opportunity. Every time you drive, every time you have a chance to be on the track in a race car, uh, there's a chance to create your own luck. And that's that's kind of the mental focus you have to have is eliminate what's happened in the past. You're only moving forward. There's only things you control ahead of you. What's happened has happened, and there's only good things to be created ahead. It's the voice of Connor Daly. Join us here for race number two as we're already in lap four of six and Chemical and Lage, at some point here, Lage is gonna have enough of this battle and he's gonna try to make it happen. He's been pushing, he's been looking left, looking right, ducking around the rear of Chemical's car. Chemical, uh, as you said earlier, Connor, doing a great job defending Lage so far, uh, but I can't see that holding off for the next two laps. He will eventually find a way through. 
Absolutely, the defensive driving is, is is very tough. I mean, if if you're able to do that and stay competitive with the guys in front, um, that takes a real talent. So I'm, I'm impressed that he's you know hasn't lost a lot of time to the guys in front of him. On down to turn 14 and 15. Got to negotiate that before you get to the final turn, turn 16, that Coca-Cola curve. And Zermatt once again in a tangle of box. It looks like Davy Skills, who at one point had firmly secured that eighth spot, he's lost it. Now to Noble Box, who Ooh. ever so closely to that inner railing. Playing chicken with the pit wall there. And uh, <laughs> there's only going to be one winner. It's great racing, though. Very respectful. I mean, to go too wide through the chicane there is uh, <laughs> nearly impossible. And uh, they're able to do it without uh, no one ending in tears. You know, you obviously play the game, Connor, and we talk a lot with our drivers that stop by of feeling that sometimes it's harder with the controller because you don't you don't get that that butt physics, right? You don't get the <laughs> yeah. you don't get the feel of being in the actual seat. Yeah, I mean, th there is that, but uh, but I think you know Forza and, every, and the, all the the people who work on this game do such a good job at at making it feel good and 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 right no matter what you're using. So I, I think I've been impressed over the years. I mean, I've been playing this game ever since Xboxes were existing. So it was, you know, it was a really cool, um, you know, a cool game to be able to see how it evolves every year. And, and, and now it's, you know, it's, it's better than ever. So. Lade's trying to make a run down here to turn eight. We told you about that Dunlop curve and he's finally gotten to the inside and carried his momentum around eight and he'll make that position stick. So a lot of patience, a lot of poking around, but finally makes a good run. Now Lage needs to reset. He needs to stop looking at the rear bumper of Chemical's car. He needs to stop judging his braking from somebody else and start running his own race rhythm. This is actually a very risky point in a race uh, for any driver. You need to really reset your own mental calibrations. Yep, get back to hitting your marks, know what you can do, uh, use your reference points that you've created. Uh, and just try to focus forward and, and make enough time on the guys in front. Lap five of six here in race number two. Connor Daly along with Ali Tack and myself, Scott Cole, bringing you through the European side of things and the final opportunity to gain some points and a little aggressive there for Mitch getting up on the side. Seems under control, though. <laughs> Dare I question? <laughs> there you question, Mitch. Mitch. Yeah, right. Don't the be that guy Mitch. who <laughs> says it, and now something happens. <laughs> He's done an incredible job, though. I mean, gosh, to 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 lead a race as powerful as he has, uh, you know, is really impressive because it's just a no mistakes type of situation. And that shows the wild talent of just being able to be in the S7 on Bathurst, flip a coin. Next thing you know, you're you're in the Subaru on Nurburgring GP, and you're still having a successful run. Isn't it nuts that 12 months ago, you know, we're talking about Lightning and Lage at the top of the Forza RC, and here we are, a year later, coming towards the second playoff of the season. We've got new names bubbling up. JSR Mitch, not JSR anymore, Williams <laughs> Mitch, uh, doing an amazing job today. Yeah, Lage actually 12th overall in the global rankings, which is wild when you think about it of course he did miss the first week while his country was winning the world cup of course lightning number two overall so lightning holding up his end of the bargain as we head to mexico city i don't think chemicals done here i think he's going to make one more run at it here in the final lap yeah sometimes if you have to drive defensively for so many laps you sort of lose your lose your style lose what you've been doing and now that he's obviously got Lage in front of him he's able to uh, he's able to refocus on his on his on his breaking points refocusing on his uh, everything that he has has been doing to be fast and now he's right back on him. Connor if there's one place uh, you would call out chemical has a chance here what do you reckon is going to happen. It's going to have to be the heavy braking zones if you're really going to send it it's uh, it's going to be in the chicane it's going to be turn one uh, unless he can go uh, through through turn six and sort of throw it down the inside of seven. That's that's a corner that you can sometimes surprise people. But I I don't know. That's going to be tough. I mean, I think this point in the final lap here, it's it's 14 and 15. Yeah, I can call yeah. it. I can call it the chicane. Absolutely. Yep. See if he makes a run. Lays just spent the entire six times around this circuit. It's going to be brave if he tries something here. 
<laughs> I would be impressed, though. <laughs> Yeah, that gap was too much. It would have yeah. been a, a bit of a dive bomb, I think, from that yeah. one. Chemical's much too respectful of the driver to do yeah. that to his buddy Lege. Well, and I think he wants these points, too. I mean, we talk about it so many times as they get across the, the finish line here for Mitch. Roadrunner is going to be right behind him. So the Williams boys have done really well in, in the first two races of the day, and, and Mitch especially. Back-to-back uh, -back races for him did not start that first race in the pole position as we welcome Brian Eckberg back in to join us, and, and we got a full house now. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it was it, it was good racing. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we saw some overtaking. We saw some bumping and grinding, but Mitch just out in front for a Sunday drive. Mitch looking real comfortable, looking like he belongs to be uh, up there in the front. And you're right, we did see some really clean passing. I think we're going to see it in the replay of, like, Lage, a textbook chemical pass, and Box really frustrating and trying to push a little hard on Zermatt in a couple different areas. I'm actually kind of worried about Box at this point. He feels frustrated. You, see you it ask right for here a replay, you get it. Yeah, you see Box there going wide there, making contact with Virus there, just trying to get back on the track here. And at that point, I think here's this battle between Box and Zermatt. The left, Zermatt's probably not too happy about that. He kind of stays wide. I don't know if that's a, a penalty there because no uh, position was gained, but it feels like Box is stretching there. Struggling, pushing very, very hard indeed. And look at that aggression through Coca-Cola as well. Not, um, not easy uh, to do at all, that kind of fighting. And when you compare that to the sort of textbook pass, so patient Lege was over chemical, it felt just natural and inevitable, which is what good passes often feel. Well, like. he applied that pressure too. I mean, how big is that, Connor? That you just let the guy know you're there. Hey, I'm here. Mm -hmm. If you make a mistake, I'm coming by. Yeah, you can get easily frustrated with having to defend the entire race. And, and that was most of uh, that race was a defensive race. And then all of a sudden, he finally lost out on that battle. Um, but it was it was good. I mean, it was very respectful. And, and, I, and after that he almost got back by him but it was just mm. just not quite enough yeah, and you could tell all the talent all the all everything that Lage brings to the table he's he's always got the pace tip of the cap for chemical for for blocking him off there for about four or five <laughs> laps but uh, eventually talent's going to go by i think it's the last thing you want in your rearview mirror is the the gamer tag Lage <laughs> appearing yeah. there getting ever closer <laughs> as you go but yeah you're right chemical i think he's Got to feel pretty good about a fourth place finish here. Second place in race, race number one. He's getting some good points today. I wonder if I can have it like a, is it like a stinger I can get for my maths moment? Like, da na 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 maths. We need a theme song. Yeah, we'll right. land that later. We'll, <laughs> yeah, we're still yeah. we're testing it through. Yeah. Scott. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, those, all those drivers are now overtaking Wesley out in lap term. So Wesley, fifth position before this by my maths. Roadrunner now ahead of him, and importantly, Mitch, up to fifth position in the global standings. Thanks, nerd. Let's go back <laughs> over to uh, the cool kids. Kate, what do you got for us? He just looks so professional with his pen in hand. That, like, really amplifies the look as you're doing the math over there, Allie. All right, the Williams boys, as we take a look at these provisional results, obviously coming in strong here in this uh, second race of the day. Mitch there in first roadrunner and second. Lage pulling in that third. Um, as people in chat were saying that he had the advantage because he was able to, to read all the bad moves that Chemical was making. Who knows? if that's how it happened. Lage let us know if that helped you out at all to be watching Chemical. And of course, so on and so forth with race, racers in fifth, A6 and uh, six. And of course, Box dropping way down, really struggling that race. It, he went wide a couple of times. He just didn't look like he was very comfortable. Uh, interesting though, JSR Rossi was saying in chat that that Subaru feels great to drive, especially with that engine. So I wish that Box would let us know if the car was uncomfortable for him or what was maybe uh, some of those handling issue. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the total points and where we stand here today. Mitch there coming in with both of the wins in, in race number one and number two. Chemical sitting very pretty in second. Roadrunner right there in third, directly behind him. Box in fourth, Lage in fifth, and so on and so forth. You know, it was really cool to watch Mitch look so comfortable in that car at that track. And I think that was something that there is a change there. Mitch, let us know uh, on social media if you can. What has maybe changed for you in these last couple of weeks even as it relates to a comfort level? All right, we'll be right back with some racing and get to know Connor Daly a little bit more. Maybe a little bit of, of his Forza background. Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs>
It's so fun to be sitting here with Connor. Uh, quick backstory: We met in the 2000s. That's fair. We're <laughs> we're talking about. It. We actually went to the same school growing up in Indianapolis. No Small joke. world. We did go to the same <laughs> high school. We've also we've also sat in chairs next to each other in interview process for the last couple of years. Connor, it's nice to have you in studio. I know Forza is a community that played a big role in your world for a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, both myself and, and obviously Joseph Newgarden, uh, we, we spent many hours uh, playing the Forza games for, for years. Uh, that's been an incredible ride to, uh, to see them, uh, you know, make the, make the progress that they have. You know, the new games all the time are, are just getting better and better, and it's such an incredible community, obviously, as well. Uh, and I have always, always enjoyed playing this game. It's just, it's so much fun. And enjoying the game to play it, but how much did it really influence your career and where you stand here today with IndyCar? Well, a lot of the times, I mean, we would get back from the race weekends and just immediately get back onto Forza. How am I going to get all the achievements? How yeah. am I going to get all the gamer score that I can get out of this game? And uh, it was it was a lot of fun to do. And, uh, you know, obviously racing on track is, is you know, my life. Um, and, and, and racing at home uh, <laughs> has also been, uh, you know, a lot of fun as, as these games, you know, continue to impress me and impress mm -hmm. everyone else in the, in the racing community. All right, we know that Joseph Newgarden also has a big influence in our world as well, and we have the Champ vs. Champ video with Tanner Faust. However, oh, yeah. you and Joseph actually played alongside one another for years. How, how does that incorporate into your real life? You guys are on track together now almost every other weekend. Well, we're very competitive together, obviously, <laughs> and uh, we've, you know, we've spent probably 12 to 16 hours sometimes at a time just in my basement at my parents' house just playing the game and, and, and just trying to do, trying to outdo each other on the leaderboards. And uh, Joseph was always a little bit better than me. He was always <laughs> like, he could get in the top 10. He could be okay. He could maybe get in the top five. I was like, eh, I was happy if I got in the top 40. And, and, <laughs> and that was a, a good day for me. So uh, it was always fun to, you know, to, to just go at each other off the track alongside, uh, you know, when we, when we do it every weekend on the racetrack as well. You're watching these guys out competing today, racing one another. What do you think is the biggest challenge for them from the driver's perspective? Well, I'm first of all jealous because they're a lot better than me <laughs> at this game. And, uh, and I, I mean, it's, it's very similar to what we're, you know, doing in, in real life. I mean, we're, you know, we're out there trying to compete, be consistent, trying to defend from each other, trying to attack at the same time, trying to fight for a championship. Um, and, and there's a lot of guys who, you know, who are doing that today and, and they're doing a great job. And there are guys who are looking for that break, looking for that opportunity to have, um, you know, the breakthrough race. And it's, it's really cool to be able to, uh, you know, to be here and see them doing that. As it relates to kind of that mental capacity, I think one of the things that my takeaway from the first playoff one was the intensity and the emotions that are poured into this kind of racing. It doesn't matter what kind of racing you're doing, it's still an emotional roller coaster. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of, uh, you know, these guys have in incredible teams that they're a part of. There's there's a, a whole community that they're representing. Um, and it, there's a lot of pressure on them <laughs> personally because you want to go out there and be the best. You yeah. want to go out and beat all the rest of the guys in the world, yeah. um, all across the world, and 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 it's it's very similar to what, what we're doing, you know, in an IndyCar. Is you you got to beat the best in the world, and these guys are the best in the world at what they're doing. So it's really cool to uh, you know to see people thriving under that pressure. You know, you had a little bit of that pressure back in May when you were part of the Bounty Hunters <laughs> pit yeah. with Forza. Talk about the competition with that because you got to really show off some skills or Yeah, not. <laughs> I would, hey, easy. I, I was trying my hardest. There was a lot of really good people there. <laughs> Joseph built his own simulator to try and do the best lap did. times, and I didn't get a chance to drive that. I just want to let everyone know that. But I had my controller in my bus, and, and I, was, I was playing every night that I could to try and do a better lap time. And uh, I would text Joseph and, and, and the rest of the guys, and uh, if we beat him by just a tenth or so, it was uh, very rewarding. So I, I, I want to do that again at some point because I think that would be a lot of fun. I think we know some people that can make that <laughs> happen. All right, the final results are in. Let's go ahead and see how everything shook out here. The final results of race number two, Mitch again having that incredible consistent race there up at top. I mean, what were your takeaways from Mitch? Flawless, yeah. uh, mistake free. Uh, that's what you have to do when you get out in front. And I was very impressed. Yeah, then Roadrunner coming in in second, another Williams, great race. I, I, again, Connor, I mentioned it earlier today and I wanted to get your feedback. The idea of being friends on track and yet not friends on track and then off track both ways. As teammates. <laughs> Realistically, you can never have friends on track. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, it's a difficult equation when you get on the racetrack 
I like this guy. We're going to probably have dinner after the race. But if something happens during the race, that dinner, dinner might, be might be easily canceled. canceled. <laughs> uh, and I, it's happened before. Line. It's happened before. I've had, you know, had controversies with some of my best friends, you know, like James Hinchcliffe. And, you know, we've we've had comings together on the racetrack before. But obviously we're, you know, we're all still friends. So it's it's something you have to put aside because in the end, this is your job. This is like what you're doing. This is what your, you yeah. know, your profession is, is what you're uh, trying to strive to be the best at. And if you're trying to be the best at something, no one can, you know, there's no sharing the yeah. best. There's yeah, yeah, the yeah. title of number one, and then there's number two. So you always want to be Is it true the they best. don't remember second? You only remember first? I as we think look that's at the, factual. As we look at the points, is that true? I think that's factual. I mean, the champion always gets the biggest reward. All right, let's go ahead. That is true, the biggest reward. Let's look <laughs> at these points. <laughs> Mitch right now, after race number two, is leading, of course, because he's had, as you said, flawless. Uh, Roadrunner there is in second, Chemical in third, who a decent run for Chemical so far today. Lege being consistent in fourth, Racers Box not happy with that. Box, I want to know what you're thinking right now, uh, running uh, tied uh, there in the mid pack. All right. All right, it is time to get back to some racing. Guys over at the desk, what do you think is going to happen here, especially with Reverse Grid? Well, reverse grid means chaos, and uh, <laughs> that makes me happy. Anytime you have the folks that have been riding at the back throughout the evening are now having their opportunity to lead from the front, and usually in Europe, it actually turns out all right because there's such a slim margin between the top and the bottom of this 12-person grid. We always end the weeks with reverse grids in these different regions, um, and it's always one of the most competitive races out there. Uh, this one's amped up even more than normal because uh, it's the final chance for these drivers to score any points before the Mexico playoffs. And I'm not going to do my math stinger again. I was, I, I was almost, I was that close to doing it again. It's quite, but I reckon Metlage needs fourth place regardless. He needs to get 10 points here. You think you can put on a cool jacket with gold <laughs> zippers on it and you're not going to get the nerd alert. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm cool with that the rest of the way. <laughs> Let's take a look at the car in the track here for the final race of the day for Europe. And it is the Aston Martin, the DBR9 in British Racing Green. Everything is perfect. I love this car. <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, big old V12 in the front of it. Uh, it handles beautifully. 50-50 weight distribution across it. It makes it one of the most popular cars on Forza Motorsport and, uh, you know, for games now. And, and I, I absolutely love that car. Well, everyone grew up going to Maple Valley. It doesn't exist unless you're in the world of Forza, in which we are. And I see some a uh, little bit of water on the track here. And that doesn't bode well for this kind of vehicle on this kind of track. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned it a little bit earlier on. This uh, car leans towards understeer. The track makes you want to understeer a little bit, and a bit of grease on the surface of that track will accentuate that even more. So controlling the front wheels of that car is going to be vital. Well, here is the grid. Seven up front, Europa in second, Davy Skills in third. You always got to find out where Box and Lage is. They are eight and nine. And Mitch all the way at the bottom. And here we go. We are green, green, green. Trust me, those cars are moving. And there we go. Lap one of 10. And I'm starting to get in that fall mood. Autumn coming around the corner. There's no better place to go than Maple Valley. By the way, the syrup there is delicious. <laughs> That's right. Um, it's uh, seven leading the way uh, after the first corner. So William Seven may be beginning to uh, rescue something from a very disappointing. He's had some bad luck races. today. Maybe some of those wounds a bit self-inflicted. But right now he's got his best opportunity to gain 20 points. And how fast is this track? Lage and Racers getting into it. Asik and Virus too wide. And at some point, they're going to have to get single file here. Virus is trying to get in line in front of Lage. And it's once again up and under. This track is absolutely gorgeous. The drivers know it's a wet race. They, they know that rain is coming. They don't know when. When <laughs> they don't know how we, the we track is going to change. You. We promise. We didn't lie to you that it's going to be. It's going to be wet at some point. Watch out in the middle of the race, and they don't know how heavy that rain is coming. Sometimes you, you get a little, you get a little sprinkle. But sometimes it is an absolute downpour. But Mitch in tenth. Let's check in with 
Kane Osborne. As he's making his way through the pack, I, you know, before that race got started, I asked, you know, Mitch, what's the big difference maker? And he said, just getting a good qualifying position through the weekend makes all the difference. I started off with very little confidence at the start of the series, and I put in the time to improve my results. And my friend, we are seeing those, that improvement. Yeah, sit with 40 points right now. Appreciate it. Kate, as we go on down to turn number six, where the track goes up and under a little covered bridge. And he's currently riding along in 10th. He's going to have some some moves he's going to have to make here, especially with Box right in front. Is there a more graphic representation of how Mitch has developed over this series than watching him fight with Box? Someone we know to be at the very, very top of the Forza Racing Championship. He's closing up that gap. He's putting pressure on him. He's keeping that drive respectful, but it's also very, very predatory. Lap two of 10. And Lage is, I mean, I know we give so much credit to what Lage does, but Mitch is the one that's come out here and really Beautiful. stole the show. <laughs> that move from Roadrunner, though, <laughs> he was waiting for us to talk about Mitch, and he wanted to put that move on to make a point. Roadrunner, still one of the top guys at Williams. And uh, yeah, round the outside there on Mitch. That was a, that was a real gutsy move. Lays with the mistake on the last corner. Tumbles by, back. By the way, the the painter for TPR. Wherever you're at, having a vacation these last couple of weeks, I, I, I hope you're enjoying yourself <laughs> as you got your guys riding around in chartreuse paint. Nothing like a lime green. Yeah, that feels nice. <laughs> More of the British racing green is what you're used to when you talk about. Uh, this British beast. A little bit less chafing on the eyeballs is the uh, the British racing green. <laughs> we know I'm, I'm still reeling from that move from Roadrunner. I can't wait. I can't wait to see the replay. Yeah, of that. we were we were Beautiful. just sort of hanging out, and he threw it to the inside on his nice. on his buddy Mitch, and it doesn't matter. Same team. I'm not saying it doesn't mean anything, but at this point, at this point, it makes it sweeter. <laughs> yeah, it makes it right. sweeter, if anything. Seven, though, looks like he's got this wrapped up in the lead, running away from it. Uh, road, uh, Europa, someone who's had a very difficult time in the races uh, so far this season, is trying to chase him down, but uh, road, yeah, well, the rain's coming down now, so yeah, everything is about to change. Here it comes, get your goulashes on here at Maple Valley. Umbrella's out, and you, you'll notice Lage all the way at the back of the pack, he actually spun out, and we're having an opportunity to take a look at this. And boy, that is just going way too fast. Come across back to the start finish line, and he put himself on skates. A lot of the pro drivers have been talking about the aero wash in this car. Aero wash is when you're following another car, it's disturbing the air in front and making it unpredictable for you as you go in and out of that slipstream created by the car in front. It's unpredictable how much grip the car will give you. So the Lay is really suffering there in the wash from air, from Asics. I'm used to your disturbing air coming out the rear. <laughs> that's right, yeah. yeah that's right. Much, much like your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Lap four of ten. I'm up 2 0, by the way, in this show. Uh, okay, I'll give you half a point for, for just going flat out your mom. Davy Skills in third here. Europa trying to hold him off. That's seven well out in front. You're through 40%. See, I'm doing some math of this yeah. race. You see Virus trying to make his way. Well, we may have an overtake here to the inside. Davy Skills. See if he can get that to hold too wide. And he will make it through. And so he'll move up into second place now, still. Several car links in between him and Williams with Davy Skills. Nice job there. He'll be able to set his sights now on these last couple. In the background, that was Racers losing it on the final corner. Boy, that across final the cor track, and it looked like he took someone else out. Woo. That rain coming down, that final corner of this track, turn 18, uh, has been a doozy. We've seen it uh, gather up Lage, and now Racers has a bit of trouble negotiating that final turn. Cones everywhere. Up and over the crest goes seven. And there is Lage just riding along. It's at, it, at this point, it is safe to say, file this day under disappointing. 
uh, for Lays. He's able to move up into ninth, but when you don't get those podium finishes, you expect, at least on a reverse grid, he's going to be the, in the middle of the pack and able to make some moves. Hasn't happened today. And compounding that disappointment is the fact that Lage needs 10 points in this race to get in front of TX3 Wesley on the global leaderboard. He can make up a grid position at the playoffs if he can get 10 points, but he's stuck back in ninth. He needs to get to fourth, and there's a lot of drivers up in front who are not going to make that easy for him. By the way, Zermatt has moved into third as well. So behind, yeah, there he is. He's passed up Europa, who for some reason just cannot keep the pace. Was doing fine on the on the dry surface, but once the you know once the rain started coming down, next thing you know, he, he's lost a little bit, and there is seven. We'll drop from first to third. As we mentioned it, that final turn coming across the start finish line has been an absolute pyramid of chaos. When you, when, you, when you try to go through there, it's now like the Bermuda Triangle has captured three of our drivers. Let's check it with Kate Osborne. Sauber Zoom is watching, and he said that handbrake to touch the ball sideways, and he didn't get damaged. Well done, Lage. So Lage was started there at the uh, middle to end of the pack, got back down to 12th, and now has moved his way back up to 9th. Obviously, Ali, as you're saying, he has to move his way up to 4th. But with some skills like that, potentially... He could do it. Yeah, he could do it. That yeah. battle up ahead it goes all the way to third. That, I mean, he can see fourth place, and it's only 100 meters up, up the road from him. It's just a lot of cars to get through <laughs> to get there. Well, anything can happen with the wet track and, and some of the results we've seen thus far. Got a lot of mist flying up from those rears. Lap six of 10. Davy Skills, with all our talking, has overtaken the top spot with seven dropping back, a couple positions. So Davy Skills has been very patient in this one, and it's starting to pay off. As you can see, him just running a nice line right here is he's got no problem with that turn 18 as he slip and slides through the start finish line. Once again, it's start lap number seven. Let's not forget, this would be a first win for Davy Skills. This would be his first time out uh, winning a race. He's a uh, TPR's representative uh, in the finals for the last couple of weeks. Of course, there's three TPR drivers out this time around. But uh, yeah, this could be big for Davies because this could be massive for him. He's currently number 17 on the rank, zero wins, but he has been on the pay uh, podium eight times. Let's welcome in Brian Eckberg. What do you got for us? I got a shot of seven getting eaten up by the Bermuda corner, the <laughs> Bermuda right-hander that you were talking about there, Scott. Coming in quick, going wide, bouncing off a wall. Maybe could have stopped him completely there. Luckily, that thing is angled. It angled him back onto the track, and he kept some of his momentum. But boy, this corner has been a beast for so many drivers today. Give us a few names of the guys that designed this track, because <laughs> yeah. that little angle right there, you talk about it funnels you back onto the track. I think it's actually the, the huge barrier that keeps you from recovering. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky spot. And, and so often when you're playing for it, it's a, it's, a it's a turn you don't really think about. In most cars, you can take that flat out. In these cars with a slick surface, you really have to be careful. Yeah, I just wanted you to like say, oh yeah, that was Dave. He's in financing now. He, yeah, he, yeah, he no longer is in <laughs> track I'm not naming design. names, Scott. I'm not naming names. <laughs> uh, appreciate it, Brian. Couple laps remaining here. Davy Skills, 007, shake and not stirred through these first seven laps. And he's just, right now he's dominating turn 18 and that, that seems to be a trouble spot, but not for Davy Skills. He's looking so in control. Davy Skills starting to get some momentum back together, and someone else who's getting some momentum is G2 Lays trying it around the outside of probably the longest corner on the game. He's not going to want to go the long way around there. You want to be on the inside for that one, Lays. I would pay to see this right here. This is Roadrunner and Lays here with three laps remaining. And Lays, he's got some pace right here over Roadrunner. A love tap, why not? Say a little hello. That's a great point though, Scott. These two have been racing each other for a long old time. You don't always see them wheel to wheel on the track. <laughs> so Roadrunner and Lage, two titans of the Forza RC. Uh, always great to see him battling it out. Lage trying to come around to the outside. Roadrunner's gonna try to keep that inside position, but Lage is starting to make the track a little less wide than Roadrunner would like, but he falls back in in line there, just taking a peek on the outside. With two drivers who are so skilled and similar on pace, it's a game of chess, it's a game of car placement. Move your car into a defensive line, take a corner deep, and he danced this uh, you know, inside-outside dance the Roadrunner and Lage are doing right now. 
hard to see who's going to work, come out on top. But hey, Roadrunner's got to be careful not to hit those little boards on the side. This isn't Forza Horizon 4. You're not going to get extra XP by knocking those down. Let's bring Kate back in. Kate, what do you got? <laughs> Talking about hitting those boards on the side. Road buddy Raceboy77 is saying that last corner is always the toughest, so it's, it's easy to make a mistake as we've seen four guys have hit the wall there so far. Why are they bouncing off? What's, what's the big deal, guys? <laughs> You're right, they're not getting extra points. No, uh, <laughs> a, a lot of it is a lot of power in this car, wet track, Maple Valley, uh, for a decade, for a decade, it's been eating folks up. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's, that's the trick there. I mean, it's, it, this car as well in that corner is, uh, is absolutely on its limit. And you can see these drivers always pushing the car, always pushing the track, and they're trying to extract as much speed as possible from it. That's just one of the uh, limiting moments of this track. I'm surprised to see how many have come off there, but uh, it is a very punishing place if you make a small mistake. You know, Maple Valley has grown over the years. I remember back when it was 480p, <laughs> pixelated. Yeah, it grew a few but more even pixels at, Even then. at that time, I mean, you talk about, you know, Connor was talking about the launch of Xbox and the original Forza and Forza 2, which is uh, maybe one of the greatest ones of the series uh, coming up to six and seven now. It's uh, it is unbelievable to see this track grow. It, it's a little bit better in 60 frames per second. I, I love the version of it on 7 as well because it's, it's wider, smoother. It's a real, uh, it's a real gliding racetrack. You carry a lot of speed through the corners. And uh, yeah, it, it feels very, very racy. I like that about it. We might have a disconnection from Davy skills. No, 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 no. It's too bad. Not like this. That's too Not bad. Like Not like this, Sally. Why? Uh, it's Davy skills on his uh, final lap of his first Jeez. ever win on the Forza RC at his final opportunity. Disconnecting. That is heartbreaking. That's heartbreaking. Um, I might throw up. Too bad for Davy skills. Uh, this is, you know, this is the beast. This is how it works. Sometimes the connection doesn't hold out. Uh, Asix takes the lead. His Davy Skills loss will be Asics's gain, but uh, yeah, heart goes out to Davy Skills right now. So Asic out in front. Racers, who's come out of nowhere for Valache, are riding along with Europa right now. You can see hot on the heels of Racers and final lap here. The rain has subsided. There's still some water on the track. Love tap there from Box. Says hello from Germany. And Lege up and over the crest here as he's riding along at six. Roadrunner right in front of him. Box is in fourth. How about that three? Box, Roadrunner, and Lege in the middle of the pack. Just living the dream. These two have really hampered each other's movement through this pack. They've been squabbling, fighting super hard, defending very hard from Roadrunner. And uh, that stopped Lege from moving forward. It probably stopped Roadrunner from moving forward as well. And uh, so these guys are going to finish mid pack. Not a fan of the lipstick on this car, I'll be honest with you. It's almost like a giant frog coming right at you. Manka's, Manka S. As this one is in the books. Press F in the chat for Davy Skills. Oof. Yeah, that was too bad. It's just too bad to see. Uh, you know, Davy Skills, what an opportunity it was for him. So close, uh, but no cigar. Yeah, we were, we were, I think we're all pulling for that, that yeah. win for Davy sure. Skills there because he was looking good on the track there. So you, you feel bad about these DNFs. Don't know what happened. Uh, maybe he'll tell Kate in the, in the chat and we'll find more about what happened with Davy Skills there. But he's got to be feeling pretty low. And, and it, 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 we talk about luck all yep. the time. And it, it's no different than, than popping a tire or having your wing fly off yep. at, at, at the worst point. Uh, but Davy Skills uh, disconnecting there when really he, he had dominated the track from the get-go. He had. Uh, Asics, though, takes the win. Remember, yeah. Asics yeah. got his first win uh, just last time out in the reverse grid race. So True. Asics making it back two to now. Back. back to back. He's starting to become a bit of a master of those reverse <laughs> grid races. Right. Taking advantage of the position you're given. Right. And uh, on the flip side of that, Europa a little bit. You know, he had a good starting position. I think he's still got to feel good about a fourth place overall. I would provisional. agree. Uh, but, uh, yeah, these reverse grids, it's an opportunity. And the guy who hurts most here is seven because he had the off, and what a great chance for him to score some real points in this championship. Bad day for seven all about. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was sad to say the least for, for seven today. Of course, he'll have an opportunity down in Mexico. Let's take a look at the moving pictures here through <laughs> this final race of the day here for, for Europe and 
I tell you what, Brian, it was, uh, I love this track. I love this track. This track has a little bit of everything. There's delays getting funneled back onto the main straight. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. You know what's interesting about this track is it's so many long turns that you feel like you can get too wide in a lot of these corners, but it's always the inside guys that's going to have the advantage. And that's never more true than it is on Maple Valley because the turns are so long. You saw a lot of that too wide into some of those long right-handers, and uh, it was usually the guy on the inside who had the advantage. No friction assist there, Allie. Once you get on that grass with the, the rain coming down, it, it could prove to be a disaster. And the rain comes down, the track evolves every lap and every moment uh, the, of the race going on. You're going to have to change the way you respond to the track, change what you predict from, uh, from the grip on the surface. And a, a few people there making mistakes, especially on that last corner. There's no opportunity, Brian, to go in and put the intermediates on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're it, going it with what, what you got. You're <laughs> running with what you run with. Uh, some, some good racing there, though. You know, and a, a tip of the cap. Sorry for Davey's skills, but uh, he, he, looked, he looked really good. Let's jump over to Kate real quick. She's got the provisional results. Yeah, as we're taking a look at that, you know, Connor, that's some interesting racing. As you just said, what would happen to you if you were running that race? Same. Davey skills. Well, that's what happened. <laughs> that was what happened to me if oh, I was Davey. to be racing online. I just I feel so bad for that guy. Oh, so no. it's just you hate to see that. Oh man, he was running so good. And he was on chat and you know, thanks for being a good sport there, Davey Skills, and jumping on with us as well. All right, the provisional results are in. Let's go ahead and take a quick gander as to how those shook out. A different one, two, three than we have seen all day so far here today. Box there in fourth, which is a that's the best that I think he could have done in, in the circumstances, too, with that reverse grid. Uh, Roadrunner jumped up to fifth. Lage, who made his way up to sixth, started, you know, between eight and ninth, moved down to twelfth at one point, and now has made his way up to sixth. Lage, I would like to know what happened to get you down in twelfth there in the middle of the race. Um, yeah, good racing, though. Reverse grid. That's always exciting. <laughs> I, I, I love that. I think it's uh, it's it's great to see uh, a different different perspective. People come from behind, uh, new leaders, new situations, new mental perspectives on on how they're going to race if they're racing from the front. Do you guys have reverse grid much in, in outdoor racing? <laughs> and how would that? Uh, <laughs> as we no, take a look we at always the we always have to qualify uh, and always <laughs> have to curious. be uh, putting that. Although I think it would be great. I think in the future, if IndyCar or any sort of hint, professional hint, racing IndyCar. series want to do that, <laughs> I think we should do that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the points as they stand at this point here today after the three races. Mitch running the after the first two races, excuse me. Uh, the first is uh, Mitch, obviously, with his perfect day uh, with those first two races, Roadrunner in second, Chemical in third. Fourth with Lage. Uh, gentlemen at the desk, do you expect anything to change as we take a look at where the points stand after the second race? Well, uh, it's going to be interesting to see. I didn't see did many see? penalties out there in that final race. I think a lot of the wounds were self-inflicted uh, out, out there. W what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, a big bumper points there for Asix, of course, taking the win. So he's going to jump himself up from, I think, seventh after race two, probably up into fourth or even third position at the end of this round. So nicely done from Asix in that final race. Yeah, anytime you can get that reverse grid and you can capitalize on it, so few do, but when you do, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, I think to, to mention that that reverse grid does help people who are good at noticing people's mistakes. As uh, Williams RR said, that race took that race so easy, was just making up positions from people's mistakes. And that's something that can actually happen. Especially in the rain, too. <laughs> the, rain, the rain, mistakes in the rain could, and it can happen very, very easily. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I love seeing a bit of uh, wet weather. I think that's uh, very, very exciting, especially with a reverse grid. You throw all kinds of new things at the drivers, and it's it's pretty cool to see how they how they work with it. Speaking of, uh, of throwing some new things at drivers, one of your favorite buddies, one of my favorite buddies, we have Tanner <laughs> Faust, Joseph Newgarden, uh, going head to head in Champ versus Champ, and it's a pretty good showing so far. Look at these two. Look how happy they both look. Some um, beautiful gentlemen here. <laughs> Incredibly talented people. And you know, it was it was actually a lot closer with that Dubai one. I don't know if you all remember. It was when they were trying to spell as they were making their way through the circuit as well. That was a <laughs> tough one. How would you do at spelling while driving a car? I was really good at those spelling games that we played in the uh, elementary school yeah. days. Uh, <laughs> the 2000s, by the way. Or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, back in the 2000s. <laughs> uh, I, but to do it while driving, I've never done that. Well, and another another challenge was in store for Joseph and Tanner. Let's see which one comes out on top here today.
this challenge, I'm choosing the Porsche Carrera GT. If I had to choose one car that was my favorite, overall, this would be it. And I get asked that question all the time. What's your favorite car? And it's hard to narrow it down, but it always comes back to the Porsche Carrera GT. While this could be something Joseph could be pretty good in because it is the most road racy car probably out here, it's still my favorite. So it's gotta be part of the challenge. So good luck, Joseph. So Tanner, we both picked Porsches. Mm -hmm. You've gone a little bit different, different year, uh, different era. I like what you've done here. I've chosen the Silverstone GP track because I think that's a little bit more in my wheelhouse. I've driven this track once. I've never been around. Rallycross does go there, but it only uses 20% tarmac. So I don't know the track, but I do know the car. Okay, well seeing as you know the car, I kind of know the track. I'm gonna make it a little more interesting. We're gonna do this one-handed. Pick left or right, and stick to that the entire time. So one, you so oh, okay, and the shifting and everything. Everything, everything is one hand. Oh my gosh, this thing's got some power. Oh Jesus, Ooh. really? We're just gonna go around. Now we'll barrier. count it. Yeah, we'll <laughs> just count, count the barriers. It's like you're ripping the handbrake every time you turn. Just ignore that. That's, that's good. You know, a lot of inside curving. I think I have a new strategy. Just going slower. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. the new strategy. Oh, oh man, there's a lot going on in the track here. Whose idea was this one here? I know, no. It's a pretty long lap. It's it's a long track. I mean, it's a proper F1 Grand Prix style track. You really have to, you know, string a bunch of corners together. Decent lap. Uh, 229. I have no idea if that's good or not. It's felt like two days. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a different strategy on the the gears here. I'm just gonna try higher gears. Obviously you thought about that since this one-handed thing was your idea. Oh, that was a good move, a good slide across the force feedback wheel. Like that? Yeah. You gotta be smooth. <laughs> it's super difficult to get your hand over. I feel like a NASCAR driver pulling my hand over like this. It feels uncomfortable to me. Like, I, I would not want to drive like You're, that. You used your left hand for a hand gesture to emphasize what you were saying. I think that's borderline that, using your left hand. I don't know about that. Can you just please just leave that at your side? Damn it. Oh, there's, there's asphalt out there. Wow, that was really good. What was your lap time again? Uh, what was your lap time, bud? Did we get a lap time check uh, on that? 229 was mine, and you beat it in your opening lap. Was that, are you sure it was 229? I'm just it gonna was stop. 219. 219. Was it really 229? I kind of forget what, uh, I kind of forget what Tanner's victory celebration face looks like. Uh, I yeah. don't know. It's been <laughs> a while sure since we've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, Tanner's just playing for pride, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Joseph, did that surprise you? You know Joseph well. Joseph is a perfectionist, and he's an incredible Forza Motorsport player, so uh, I am not surprised. <laughs> Let's not forget that the one-handed thing was Joseph's idea, so he, I think he was automatically giving himself an advantage there. I could see him, oddly enough, trying stuff like that at his house. Yeah. Like, what can I do differently? <laughs> oh, let's play with one hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, I just like the fact that his hand looked like a, a dino claw. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Anyways, all right, it's time to take a look back at the 2000s with liveries this time around. And yeah. I'm excited. This is my favorite thing of the 90s. Oh, man. This is uh, so you guys know we've been doing this livery contest in the Forza community. People designing around themes of our decades. SES Screamies has been keeping really consistent. He's been doing the themes of the Forza Racing Championship decade races. So great job by him on this Subaru Impreza. Great stuff. I love this color scheme. And Jay Big Daddy yeah. with some NOS style. I like this too. I'm all about that. Yeah, I totally. love NOS. <laughs> yeah, like the shredded effect, that's really cool. Like yeah. the car is being shredded from I the just speed. Love the mm. Like OPT is not a name we've seen before, but this is a gorgeous race theme livery here. Love the look on this Lotus. Really sharp looking. Well done, Lyco PT. And we've also got one from Buddy Muncher. Now, Kate, we've seen Buddy Muncher throughout this entire competition. Oh, the Y2K. Y2K bug, uh, man. That makes sense. It still scares me. I know. I'm not, I'm not convinced <laughs> we're we past it yet. I think we still have things of water I, in my parents' basement. That's right. I'm I need more certain. beans. More beans for Y2K bug. Uh, Buddy Muncher, well done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just stock up on beans. <laughs> MFU82, think blue, minus 80 CO2. That rhymes. Well done there. Like an Earth Day theme, maybe? Or yeah. I like that. Biogas. Yeah, for sure. 
Very, Where uh, was I in the 2000s? I swear, I don't know if, oh, if that makes sense for our final one. Yeah, now this is PGG Fox, of course, well-known painter. Uh, you can see echoes of Forza Motorsport, the original Forza Motorsport, yep. Forza 2, Connor, Classic. Forza 3. Only on Xbox. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Xbox 360 it. style. Look at that. Well That's, done, yeah. PGG Fox. So well done to all those drivers. And thank you to everyone who's taken part in our livery contest this this season. It's been fantastic. The work yeah. they've done has been phenomenal. And, of course, you can vote on your favorite at watch.forza.rc.com. And uh, add your insight and your input because I think it's, uh, it's really fun to see the 2000s taking hold of those liveries. All right, the final results are in. It's a really interesting race there in that race number three. Well, there's that Davy Skills DNF. You just got to feel terrible from from you know, first to worst because of that DNF. It's just don't a terrible. Don't give up, bro. Yeah, don't give up, Davy Skills. I know that's a hard way to end the Wednesday showdown, but otherwise, guys, no penalties the entire day. That's a, that I would have not have predicted that at, in the least compared, uh, especially considering where we were going to race today. Good, clean family fun there, eh? I love that. <laughs> we <laughs> like that, that for sure. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at the, the leaderboard, the points from today and how it all shook out. Mitch there, he was just hoping to finish that race, I think, knowing that he had you know, pulled in a first in both those two races. Roadrunner there in second. Williams really showing strong, uh, strong efforts here today. Asics in third. That's a pretty solid go at it for Asics. That, that win in that last race really helped boost that one for him and chemical racers. And then Lage in six. How, Brian, does that impact Lage? Well, Lage, you know, we, we were talking about the fact that he needed 10 points, I think, in that last race to, to get over his next, the next person on the leaderboard. So, you know, he, obviously he's going to Mexico City. He's going to be a factor at Mexico City, but he's thinking about where is he going to start on the grid at Mexico City. So every point counts. So he's probably dis a little bit disappointed with that finish. Probably would have loved to have ha had a win, of course, but it's Lage. He's going yeah. to be fine even from the mid-pack. Yeah. And, of course, qualifying order does matter, as Connor, you know very, very well. Yeah, I mean, we saw today, obviously, with the reverse grid and, and, and how that sort of mixed things up a little bit. So, clearly, they're going to be thinking about where they're going to be starting. Uh, I obviously know uh, how important it is to start up front. You can, <laughs> you can easily uh, get through some of, the, uh, some of the chaos that happens in the mid-pack. And, and if you're coming from the back, it definitely presents a very difficult challenge. Well, the racing is just halfway done today. Of course, we have another race, the North America Round Wednesday Showdown coming up this evening at 6 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you join us for watch.forza.rc.com. And you can also join in the fun there for the voting, uh, the rewards, the quests, and everything else mm -hmm. that we may have going on online. All right, final thoughts. Any takeaways? Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Excuse us, uh, what's coming up here uh, as uh, we continue our season here, the Series 2 broadcast schedule. Why am I getting ahead of myself? How on earth do I want to miss this? The Series 2 recap, uh, September 12th, playoffs promotion show, September 26th. And then we are taking it to Mexico City one mm -hmm. month away. Um, you guys, are you ready, Brian? I am like not pack, ready. Pack, pack. Uh, no, 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 I'll pack the night before as I usually do. <laughs> going to eat some guacamole and... <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, uh, whatever it takes. want to come join the fun? <laughs> yeah, can I go? <laughs> yeah. I'm all in. <laughs> all right, snappy final thoughts. Here's what we're... What, break your takeaways for today, gentlemen. Uh, my final thought is just never get disconnected. Mm. That is just the worst <laughs> yes. thing ever. I feel so tip. bad. That's happened to me yeah. many times, and I want to throw my computer or, or Xbox straight out the window. Yeah. Yeah, for me, surprisingly clean racing all throughout the day. You know, North America tends to be a little bit more wild cards in there. We'll see if they're going to be caught out by the Bermuda Triangle corner here at Maple Valley, if it's going to be raining. And, of course, the Selena 7 at Bathurst, always interesting. All right, a big thank you to everyone who's involved. Our casting crew uh, of hundreds of people, those on uh, the Forza community, part of you, all this wouldn't be possible without your voting. We appreciate all of your help and your insight. We will be back at 6 p.m. Pacific right here on watch.forzarc.com.